Hi, Ernesto. Hi, Michael. Hi. Uh, today's question says, uh, there are people who arrive uh, at the teachings of Advaita and establish as a priority to try to attend to the consciousness when the level of darkness is still very big because of how their minds are affected by diverse thoughts and emotions. Uh, wouldn't it be more convenient that the first priority was to be able to clear that darkness to avoid so many self-deceptions of a spiritual ego, believing uh, uh, because they believe to be on the margin, on the edge of the ego, while living a ba unbalanced life, and then from a certain point onwards, to start trying to attend to the consciousness that we are. What is the darkness we're talking about? The primary darkness is the darkness of self-ignorance. That is ego, the, the nature of ego. As ego, we are always aware of ourselves but we are aware of ourselves as something other than what we actually are. So this is self-ignorance. That is the very nature of ego. That is the primary darkness. That is the darkness we ultimately need to get rid of. And because that is a darkness of self-ignorance, it can be, uh, we can remove it only by self-knowledge, by knowing what we actually are. When we know what we actually are, we will no longer mistake ourselves to be anything else. And thereby ego is uh, annihilated uh, because ego is nothing but that false awareness of ourself. Awareness of ourself is something other than what we actually are. So that's our ultimate aim. But in order to, wh why we are not able to clear out this darkness of e ego now, why we, is because we are not yet willing to turn within to see what we actually are. The reason we are not willing is because of the strength of our vishaya vasanas. Vishaya vasanas means our inclination to be aware of things other than ourselves. It is the very nature of ego to have vishaya vasanas because ego, uh, as Bhagavan says, ego comes into existence grasping form. Uh, grasp, well, grasping form, it comes into existence. Grasping form, it stands. Grasping and feeding on form, it flourishes greatly. Um, so uh, that, that grasping form means being aware of, uh, of vishaya, or of things other than ourselves, phenomena. So that is the nature of ego. But so long as, so, so long as our vishaya vasanas are very strong, we can say the darkness is very dense. The more we uh, weaken our vishaya vasanas, the more the darkness is dispersed. Still the original the, the root darkness of self ignorance is still there, but the, the outer darkness or, or the sort of uh, peripheral darkness is getting reduced as we, as the Vishaya Vasanas get um, weaker and weaker. We, we develop more love or bhakti to know what we actually are, to, to know and to be what we actually are. And the, the liking to be aware of other things slowly, slowly diminishes. So this is the weakening of the Vishaya Vasanas. So though the original darkness is self-ignorance, and that can only be removed by self-knowledge, in the process of, of, that is, in order to remove that, we first need to remove the, vish, uh, the Vishaya Vasanas, or weaken the Vishaya Vasanas to a great extent. Because so long as our Vishaya Vasanas are strong, we will be unwilling to turn within and know what we actually are. So, um, when it is said here, when the level of darkness is still very great because of how their minds are affected by diverse thoughts and emotions, that level of darkness is the level of density of um, Vishaya Vasanas. And it's the Vishaya Vasanas that give rise to all the diverse thoughts and emotions. So the problem we're up against is the Vishaya Vasanas. If we can weaken our Vishaya Vasanas, we can then get at their root which is uh, namely ego, and uh, annihilate it by uh, being aware of ourselves as we actually are. This is, that is the ego is, Bhagavan often said the ego is the root of all thoughts. All the other, all the vasanas are like the leaves and branches of a, of a like a, the leaves and branches of a dense bush. If we want to root out a dense bush, we need to, we need to cut the root. But in order to get to the root, we first need to cut 
back to a large, to a considerable state, extent that all the leaves and branches, because so long as the leaves and branches are there, we can't even access the root. Um, so we, the leaves and branches are like the, um, are like the Vishaya Vasanas. That is what we need to, uh, we, we need to uh, cut back to a considerable extent before we can uh, get up a root and cut it. Um, so um, how to get rid of these Vishaya Vasanas? What are Vishaya Vasanas? They're nothing but the liking to be aware of things other than ourselves. So in order to overcome our Vishaya Vasanas, we have to develop a, a, a contrary liking, a liking to be aware of ourself alone. And we develop that liking by trying to be aware of ourself alone. In other words, by trying to be self-attentive. So there is no other means that is so effective at clearing out the uh, Vishaya Vasanas. Some people, the Vishaya Vasanas are so strong, they are not even attracted to this path. If, if one is not attracted to this path, then there are other um, more roundabout uh, means are prescribed, uh, particularly the path of bhakti, the puja, japa, dhyana, all these. These will help to purify the mind. Purify the mind means to reduce the strength of the Vishaya Vasanas. Bhagavan has written about this in verses 3 to Eight of Upadesha India. There he, he grades different practices according to their relative efficacy in purifying the mind. That means in reducing the strength of the Vishaya Vasanas. So least effective is puja, which is an action done by body. More effective than that is japa, which is an action done by speech. And even within japa, he, he, um, he says, uh, better than Japa in a loud voice, Japa in a uh, soft, uh, I mean, uh, softly muttered within the mouth. And better than that is mental Japa, Japa done only mentally. And mental Japa is a type of meditation. And the better than um, uh, uh, Japa is, uh, so the, the best form of Japa is the mental Japa, which is a form of meditation. And meditation is more effective than either Puja or Japa. Um, Meditation, the more, the more we, um, meditation in this context means meditation on God, because Bhagavan is talking about the path of bhakti. So meditation on God, if the, the more uninterrupted the meditation is, um, the more effective it is, Bhagavan says. Why is that? Because to the extent that we have love for God, we will be able to fix our minds on him and think only of him, of his name or his form or whatever. Um, so the, the, the extent to which we're able to keep our mind fixed on God shows the extent of our love for God. But um, Bhagavan in verse 8 is the most important verse where Bhagavan distinguishes two types of meditation on God. One is Anya Bhava and the other is Ananya Bhava. In Anya Bhava, Anya means what is other. Um, Bhava in that context means meditation. So Anya Bhava is meditating on what is not other. In the context that implies meditating on God as something other than ourself. And so long as we, we believe God is something different, we are something different, that is where the Anya Bhava comes in. Um, most uh, devotees of God take God to be something other than themselves and therefore they meditate on his name or form or whatever. Um, but more of, Bhagavan says more effective than that is Ananya Bhava. Ananya Bhava means meditation on what is not other. And Bhagavan um, clarifies what he means by Ananya Bhava. He gives a relative clause, um, Abhanaham Ahum Ananya Bhava. That is an, uh, Ananya Bhava in which he is I, in which God is I. In other words, if, uh, once we recognize that God is that which is shining in us as I, we no longer need to meditate on any name or form as, uh, of, of God. We meditate directly on I, because I is the true form of God. The Swarupa of God is that which is shining in us as I. So uh, the best meditation on God is to meditate only on I. And Bhagavan says, uh, when he writes about that, he says, anetinam utumam, that is, means it's the best among all. In the context, what he means by best among all is the most effective of all means to purify the mind. 
So if we are at all, if we feel at all attraction to this path of self-investigation, this is the best path for us. There's no other path that is better. We don't have to uh, resort to other means to purify the mind. We, we, we do so directly by means of, uh, of uh, self-investigation. Other paths are appropriate for people who are not attracted to a path of self-investigation. Um, they, they, they prefer a, a more slow roundabout way, that's fine. Um, so other, there are other uh, methods for clearing out the darkness, but if we want the most effective way to clear out the darkness and uh, the resulting uh, self-deception, um, this path of self-investigation is the best way. Even if we are not able to keep our attention on ourselves for a long period of time, even if we're not able to, as Bhagavan said in the previous verse, verse seven, meditating without uh, uninterruptedly, like the flow of, um, of, of ghee or, um, uh, or, or a, a river, that uninterrupted flow, if we, even if we're not able to uninterruptedly attend to ourselves, doesn't matter. To the extent possible, if we extend, attend to ourselves, that is far more effective than any other form of spiritual practice. Um, because ultimately, the aim of all spiritual practices is to purify the mind. That means to reduce the strength of the vishaya vasanas. Other sp forms of, uh, of spiritual practice may reduce the strength of the vishaya vasanas to some extent, but ultimately, to, we can get rid of the vishaya vasanas only by cutting their root, only by rooting them, uh, removing their root, which is uh, our self as ego. And in order to get rid of ego, self-investigation is the only means. Because what, what is ego? Ego is nothing but a false awareness of our self. So we can get rid of it only by correct awareness of our self. And in order to be aware of our self as we actually are, we need to attend to our self. So, um, this path of self-investigation is such an effective means. It, there's, um, there's no need to take to any other, uh, if we're attracted to this uh, path, no need to take to any other um, means. So long as we try our best to be self-attentive, that will be um, very effectively reducing the strength of our Bishaya Vasana, better, more effectively than any other means. Um, in the wording of this question, so many self-deceptions of spiritual ego. Um, people use this term spiritual ego. It's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a strange term because ego is the very opposite of spiritual. Um, I think what is meant by spiritual ego is when people have an identity. Uh, that is, instead of identifying themselves as I'm a worldly person, they identify themselves as I'm a spiritual person. But even the, even the thought, I am a spiritual person, that itself is ego. So in that sense, I think, I, think, I suppose that is what is meant by spiritual ego. Um, it's a type of pride to think I am spiritual. Other people are not spiritual. It's, uh, um, these are all typical deceptions of ego. But in self-investigation, it doesn't matter what form the ego takes. We are dealing with the, uh, that is the nature of ego to grasp form, to identify itself as I am so and so, I'm such and such a person, I belong to such and such a, a country, a religion, a political party, uh, this or that. Or, but we have so many forms of identity. Um, and um, if we think uh, I, I am spiritual, that's, uh, there's a pride in that, and that's a very, that's, uh, that, that the more pride we have in our identity, that means the stronger the identity is. So we, our aim is to get rid of all identities. We are not spiritual, we are not anything. I am only I, nothing else. Um, that is the truth Bhagavan has revealed. Um, uh, uh, um, so, so um, whether it's spiritual ego, whatever type of ego we, we, whether we call it spiritual ego or whatever we call it, ego is ego. And we, we, we can get rid of it only by uh, knowing ourselves as we actually are. And in order to know ourselves as we actually are, we need to turn our attention within. And in order to turn our attention within, we need to, to a considerable extent, reduce the strength of our Bishaya Vasanas. 
Um, then the, after that uh, mention of self-deception or, or spiritual ego, it says, believing to be on the margin of the ego while living unbalanced. What is meant by on the margin of ego? I, I think, I don't, uh, well, you, can, you can talk, Ernesto. No, no, please, please. No, I, I think it's my interpretation. I think it's uh, on the margin. I think what, what uh, the question wants to, uh, wants to solve is it, wants to say is that uh, that people think they're closer to uh, very close to abandon their ego okay they are close to to come to the end of the elimination of the ego. i don't know if that's yes yeah well that's we right. don't we don't know how close or, or far we are <laughs> we shouldn't be concerned about that what am i here and now not what am i going to be tomorrow or what am i going to be next year or next lifetime what am i here and now so whether we are near or far we are seeking to know what we are here and now that should be our concern mm -hmm. one question uh, i have a question regarding what you said about the the vishaya vasanas yes uh, for example uh, because in the in the question i think uh, vishaya vasanas as you said these are our tendencies or or inclinations to experience uh, certain things. Uh, in the questions, uh, the question says the, the word darkness, as if, yeah. uh, so I think what, what the question means by darkness is like the conflicts we have with people, our own inner conflicts, where there are strong emotions involved, for example, anger, guilt, anxiety, fear. Yeah. Uh, all, all these are, are manifestations oh, of our Vishaya Vasana. That's the question. That, that's yeah. a manifestation of the Vishaya Vasana. So by dealing with the Vishaya Vasana, yes. as a result, we are uh, reducing we are reducing conflicts with our, in our own psyche or yes. in our own mind and yes. also with other people. Yes. The, the Vishaya Vasanas are what make up the, um, the will, the chittam or what is also called Ananda Maya Kosha. Um, so, uh, um, sorry, what was it? Uh, oh yeah, so Ananda Maya Kosha is often called darkness. The usual explanation of why it's called darkness is that what remains in sleep is the Ananda Maya Kosha, which is the darkness of, of ignorance in sleep. But according to Bhagavan, sleep is, there is, uh, sleep is not a state of darkness, it's a state of pure awareness. And there are no kojas in sleep because the kojas are kojas of ego. The, what ego, Bhagavan says in verse 5 of uh, Uludunaftu, Uru Pancha Koza Uru, uh, that is, the body is a form composed of five sheaths, therefore all the five are included in the term body. So when, when we experience uh, any of the five sheaths, we experience all of the five sheaths. In the waking and dream state, we are aware of ourselves as a body, a physical body. Um, and that physical body has prana, it has life. It has uh, functioning in it is a mind, an intellect, and a will. We experience all this. This is one bundle the, the makeup, the person we take ourselves to be. So and without we, body, there are no koshas, you mean? Sorry? Without a body, there are no koshas. No, no. We, 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 because whenever we rise as ego, we identify ourselves with a body. In, 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 the, um, in many Advaitic texts, it is explained that in the, in the waking state, we identify with the stula sarira, the gross body. In the sleep, sorry, in dream, we identify with the sukshma sarira, the subtle body. And in uh, uh, sleep, we identify with the karana sarira. And you said the stula sarira is the physical body. The uh, sukshma sarira consists of the, um, the mind and intellect, and it's usually the pranamaya kosha is usually classified along with the subtle body rather than the gross body, but sometimes it's classified along with gross body. Um, and is it, the karana sarira, the causal body, is what, is what remains in sleep, the darkness of ignorance in sleep. That is the, 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 the prevalent uh, explanation given in, um, in Advaitic texts. And there are Upanishads that, uh, that lend support to this view. But this, 
this is a um, this is one level of explanation, but it's not the deepest level of explanation. Bowen gives us a deeper level of explanation. He says, actually, um, there's no difference between waking and dream. But what we now take to be waking is just another dream. Just as we, this body which we now experience as I, seems to us to be physical now, while we are dreaming, the dream body seems to be physical. So, and in dream, we, we have a, what seems to be a physical body, prana, mind, intellect, and will. So all five are there in dream, all five are there in waking. None of the five are there in sleep, because in sleep there is no ego uh, to have any will or intellect or anything. <laughs> there is just pure awareness in sleep. So Bhagavan's explanation, Bhagavan's analysis of the three states goes far deeper than the, the usual analysis that is given. The usual analysis is given to suit people of a certain level of spiritual maturity. But uh, I, I mean, if, if you read the, the works of Shankara or even um, uh, Mandukya Karika of uh, Godapada, in many places it seems to uh, support this view of the three states, of the three bodies in the three states. That view seems to be supportive, but at the same time, there are verses there in which uh, sleep is, uh, sorry, waking is said to be just a, um, a, a dream. That is explained by some Advaitins as uh, waking is like a dream, but it's not actually a dream. Whereas Bhagavan says, no, it is actually a dream. If it, there's no difference between waking and dream, according to Bhagavan, except in, in Nana, he gives one exception. He says, except that waking is long and dream is short. But in Guru Bhattaka Kuvai, there's a verse where Bhagavan said, even that explanation is not correct, because long and short is, is relative. From the perspective of the waking state, other dreams seem to be short. But while we're dreaming, we don't think, uh, we don't think oh, I'm now in a state that started just five minutes ago. We think we, think we are, um, now I'm uh, 60 years old, or however old we happen to be. We, we, we continue to believe that, just like in now we believe we have we had the life going back to childhood, in, in dream also, we have memories. If we think back to our childhood, we can remember our childhood in the dream. So the, the dream seems just as long while we are dreaming as waking seems while we are awake. So even this, uh, Bhagavan said, Time is just is time is only in the mind, so time is relative. It's just uh, um, so there there is actually no difference at all between waking and dream. There may be differences in quality, like um, but we can see that certain dreams are very um, fleeting and insubstantial, whereas other dreams seem to be more solid or more um, real. So there are different qualities of dream. But actually, dream is dream, whatever, whatever quality it is. It's just like a, a cinema. It's, films made now in the 2020s are, are far more, the technology involved in making the films are far more sophisticated than they were 50 years ago or 100 years ago. So better quality films, but it's still a film, whether it's good quality or bad quality. Likewise, a dream is a dream, whether whatever the quality of a dream may be, uh, um, the, uh, the substantively, it's the, same, it's the same state, even though qualitatively there may be differences between one dream and another. Um, so the, the, the explanation, um, why the, uh, the Karana Sarira or Anandamaya Kosha is called darkness in many context. The explanation which it is because it's the darkness of ignorance of sleep doesn't really match with what Bhagavan taught us. According to Bhagavan, the darkness of ignorance is ego. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of ego to be ignorant, to be ignorant, to be self-ignorant. The, the darkness that is uh, when the uh, uh, an undermine kosha or karana sarira or, uh, is called darkness, it means it's the darkness of the vishaya vasanas. That is, the stronger our vish vishaya vasanas, the denser our ignorance will be. The more our, 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 our inner clarity will be clouded over. 
as we reduce by, by turning with him more and more, the strength of the Vishayak Vasanas get reduced. So more and more the inner clarity begins to shine forth and we begin to get greater degree of, uh, of viveka, of uh, discernment, uh, discrimination. In what you are, uh, Michael, telling before about the, the dream, no? Uh, when, mm -hmm. you are, when you are dreaming, uh, if you analyze the time, the long that is the, 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 the awake state, no? Yes. The, the awake state, If you are in this dream, uh, waiting for 20 years, for example, no? Yeah. To your, to your wife, no? In a, in a bus stop, no? Yeah. And you analyze how long is the waking state, no? Yes. In, in contrast, maybe for you, the waking state is very short. Mm. Because you are in this dream, dreaming that you are compared the dreaming uh, state that in, in what you are involved, Uh, respect the the waking the, the waking dream no um, in the, in this in the reverse case no uh, you can analyze ever from this waking state that is very long and the dream is only eight hours at night no well what it, what is it that makes that now we think our present waking state it's a long state uh, i mean okay it's uh, the It's only for, say, 16 hours a day, but it's the same state we're returning to again and again. So it appears that we've been in this waking state with interruptions for the last so many years, ever since the body was born. What is it that gives us the impression of this state being long is our memories. Yeah. So because we can remember back to our childhood, which may have been 40, 50, 60 years ago, This, we seem to have been around for quite a long time. While we are dreaming, if we think back, we could, in the dream we can remember our childhood. The same memories that we have now in this waking state, we have those same memories in dream. But, and while we're dreaming, it seems to us that we're awake, generally speaking. Uh, so we have the same memories. So while we are dreaming, the dream seems to be just as long as our present state seems to be while we are in this state. If we can remember all the dreams that we had from the uh, one year old, yeah, well, we, we don't. Time. Yeah, some dreams we remember. It's it's not remembering the dream. We remember this present dream. We rem we have memories of this present dream, going back to our childhood. If, if tonight, if we fall asleep and we're in a dream, the same memories that we have in the waking state, we have those same memories in uh, um, in dream. Sometimes those memories are clearer, sometimes we're a bit confused, sometimes we're in a dream and things don't seem to be quite right. We, we think, so, no, but we can't really remember what, well, that is sometimes, for example, um, uh, as we get older, these dreams will get less, but when, when after we leave school and we enter adult life, sometimes we have dreams, but we're back in school again. Mm -hmm. Is it continuing? Yeah, yeah. So, so some, sometimes the, 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 um, or sometimes we'll think, I shouldn't be in school now. Well, now it's, uh, we, we, we feel the situation is not quite right. So, but, uh, but then our memories are too vague because, but the, it's the same in the waking state. Sometimes our memories are clearer. Sometimes our memories are, uh, memory is a very um, unreliable yardstick. Because as time goes on, memories fade, and in certain circumstances, memories come. And sometimes in a, we can experience something, we can see a certain thing, and that brings back a memory, the things that we have forgotten for many, many years. So memory is a very um, fickle, uh, fickle uh, thing. All our memory of, I mean, all our idea of the passing of time is, in, is dependent on our memory. Yes, and, and I think that it's the, like the process of thinking or, or the mind filters that passing, that time passing by as a something normal without gaps. Like yes, in, a, yes. in a dream, for example, you are uh, at the bus stop, as Ernesto said, and then like suddenly you're in the mountains. 
And yeah, yeah, yeah. You, there is no gap, but then you rem from waking, you remember that there was a, a jump. You jump from yeah, from yeah, yeah, yeah. Person. But in, in dream, in dream, we hardly we hardly notice that. Or if we do, we're a bit surprised. But anyway, it all seems real anyway because we're in that state. Yes, and if you are not um, very alert, no, very awake. Mm. Uh, for example, I remember my my mother had an accident. Uh, 10 years ago, no? Yes. He was driving uh, from his city uh, to other city and began to think. Yes. The, uh, suddenly, she um, take with a car in a highway stop. <laughs> yes. And she told me, the last uh, image that I saw was uh, a village because after 20 kilometers, I was thinking, no? And yeah. this is similar that Carlos uh, say now. Uh, yeah. in, in a dream state, you can see a mountains and suddenly see the bus stop. Uh, and yeah. when you are outside uh, in, in, the, in the thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the same, yeah, no? yeah. Oft, Often we, 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 we may have an intention to do something. For example, we may decide to go to the kitchen to to put something away or something. And then we come back, what did I go to the kitchen for? What did I do in the kitchen? We could, <laughs> then it happened just then, we've forgotten about it. And often we, when we are, we are walking, we think, oh, did I pass that place already? And so but, but, um, because, because of our, our attention gets diverted by other thoughts, we often are not attentive to what, what's happening. And so we don't actually have memory of even very recent um, events. Yes. Um, so that's what I say. Memory is a very, um, it's very unreliable. <laughs> yes. But uh, we have enough memory to create this illusion that we have now been in this world for so many years. We have a life and we were a child and since our childhood we've gone, in our childhood we went through certain experiences. Since then we've gotten through certain experiences. All these memories together create the, the illusion but we, this is a, con, uh, a long continuous dream. Yes. But just, okay. because, just because we remember something, now, now we, we remember. For example, we may be able to remember something we did when we were 10 years old. Hmm. But actually, okay, from, from normal worldly point of view, we, we, we rely on our memories. But if we think deeply about it, how can we be sure if any of our memories are correct? These, we, 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 maybe we never were a child. Maybe we, were, we came into existence five minutes ago with all these memories. Yes, it's supposition. All, all we actually know is what we're experiencing now. Yes. And the memories are things we're, we're experiencing now, but they create the impression that we had experienced these things in the past. Hmm. I'm not saying we didn't, but I'm just saying memory, memory but, but our whole... Um, Memory plays a key part in creating this illusion of a con of a continuous um, uh, uh, state, including the, the create the illusion that there are a dream state and a wake state. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, yeah. This is it's, it's an illusion that is a break there. Yes, yes, but it, um, yeah, but. How how we while we are dreaming we don't recognize that we are dreaming generally speaking we recognize that we were dreaming only after we've woken up so mm -hmm. this present state though Bhagavan says this is just a dream it doesn't seem to us to be a dream it seems to us to be real but likewise when we're dreaming that state will seem to be real why because we, whatever dream we are in, we identify a body, we experience ourselves as a body. Because we are real and we experience the body as ourself, the body seems to be real. And because the body is a part of a world, the whole world seems to be real. So whatever body and world we are currently experiencing seem to us to be real. So while we are dreaming, what we're experiencing seems to us to be real. However, um, inconsistent it is as you say one moment we're at the bus stop next moment we're walking up a mountain um or we, we one moment we're talking with someone and suddenly it becomes someone else hmm. these sort of things happen but still it all seems real 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, um, uh, returning to the um, to the the question, no, that we are speaking yes. about, uh, some people uh, when um, begin to feel very attractive with the uh, ajatavada, no, with the high levels of these uh, teachings, yes. uh, usually think that this is a fantasy, really, that he are very attractive to self investigation. But uh, in, in this move to, to feel experience uh, very high, you know, to, to yeah, go, yeah. go out of his fears and all of that, um, come to these teachings. But after when the vasanas begin to go out after the love of the first moments with these yeah. teachings, yeah. Uh, feel that they, they don't want or they can't, no? Yeah. And uh, from this point, begin to criticize, no? Begin to be criticized with, with the teachings, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> so many minds. We don't have to be concerned about others. We have to think about our situation. What do we want? What we are all seeking is happiness. Where does happiness lie? If we understand Bhagavan's teachings, though we may not be fully convinced of it yet, but at least we understand um, to some extent that happiness isn't outside. We, have, we don't uh, 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 derive happiness from anything outside. Happiness is our real nature. Whatever happiness we seem to derive from external things is actually coming from within us. So uh, if we want to be, well, we all want to be happy. So the way to be happy is to seek that happiness within ourselves. If we've understood that, and if we are at least to some extent convinced of that, we will try our best to follow this path. And the more we follow it, the, the more strongly drawn we will be to it. Um, if other people initially seem to be attracted and then go away and um, follow other worldly dispute, uh, pursuits, they're not yet ready for it. That doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, once someone asked Bhagavan, Bhagavan, though you teach us that there's no happiness in the world, why is it that our mind is still after, goes after the world? Bhagavan said, because you haven't had enough of it yet. So sooner or later, we'll all have had enough of this world, and therefore we'll be, we'll be willing to turn within. Hmm. So let, let's, not, let's not look to others, what, whether others are... Uh, if, if anyone... He seems to be attracted to this path and later goes away to some other path. They weren't really strongly, they weren't attracted to this path strongly enough. And one thing, uh, Michael, about the meditation that you said, that mentioned Bhagavan, the uh, he as I, uh, yes. God as I, is that self-investigation? Yes, that's self-investigation. What is self-investigation? How do we investigate ourselves? Only by attending to ourselves. So, uh, Bhagavan, sometimes there are other terms Bhagavan uses in Nana, for example, in the tenth paragraph, he uses the term um, uh, Swarupa Dhyana. Swarupa Dhyana literally means meditation or contemplation on one's own form or one's own real nature. So that means self attentiveness. Uh, in the next paragraph, the eleventh paragraph, he uses the term Swarupa Smarane. That means uh, self-remembrance. What, what's that? That's just another way of describing self-investigation. Uh, likewise, in the 13th paragraph of uh, Who Am I, when he defines what is surrender, he begins that uh, sentence with the word anma chintane. That means self, uh, thought of oneself or self-meditation, meditation on oneself. That again means self-investigation. So oh, Bhagavan I used many terms yeah, but they're yeah. all referring to the same thing. So what Bhagavan refers to as Ananya Bhava, meditation on what is not other than oneself, that is only, that's obviously only self-investigation. So Ananya Bhava is like self-investigation, so just to put, the, to put, to put the, another name. Yes. Ananya Bhava is self-investigation, Ananya Bhava is, Ananya Bhava would be like other form of meditation, like Vipassana or like yeah, 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 yeah. another kind of meditation. Yeah. Because uh, too many people, uh, when think or try, uh, want to explain the self-investigation, only accept the um, 
questions no about who am i uh, yeah. what is the source of this i no yeah yeah that is, that is a very very um <laughs> Usually, uh, wrong, wrong understanding. Yeah. Bhagavan never said, "Ask who am I." He said, "Investigate who am I." Yes. Uh, occasionally, in Tamil, he used terms that can be interpreted as "ask," but yeah. it, 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 if he uses such terms, he's using them in a metaphorical sense. Mm -hmm. Merely asking who am I isn't is of no use. Yes. Because that, that question, who am I, is something other than ourselves. So we're allowing our attention to go outwards towards that question. <laughs> Self-investigation is turning our attention within. And, and the, 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 base says, of, the base of the, the essence of Atma Chintana, Atma Anishta, and Atma yeah. Swarupa is the, yeah. the, is the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I don't know, you want to add anything else? Or we can... No, I think I answered that. Um, can put an end to this topic you, here. you will notice generally whenever uh, a lot of the questions that are uh, asked by people in your group there about um, it's similar to this question that was asked today but whatever question I, I'm asked ultimately the best of all practices is this practice of self-investigation that Bhagavan has taught us so there is no adequate alternative to this if we're not if we're not drawn to this, then there are other paths that will gradually purify the mind. But as Bhagavan says in verse 3 of Upadesh Undia, um, uh, uh, um, uh, um, sorry, um, that means nishkarmiya karma uh, done for God, that means implies done for the love, love of God, um, Purifying the mind, it shows the way to liberation. So purifying my mind means by these uh, puja, japa, dhyana, um, dhyana in the sense of anyabhava, of meditation on things other than ourselves, these will gradually uh, weaken the hold of vishaya vasanas to, to up to a certain point. But it, it, when the mind is purified to a certain extent, then it will begin to recognize but, but it, will, it will understand the truth, but, but what we are seeking is, lies within us. It's our own real nature. And therefore, the, the way to, uh, to the, the, the path that Bhagavan refers to in verse 3, when it says it will show the path to liberation, that path to liberation is to turn within and merge back into the source from which we have risen, which is our own real nature, pure yes. awareness. It's very important uh, that we can uh, detect what is the moment that is not necessary to continue to purify uh, the mind, no? trying to purify the mind between this Ananya Baba, no? uh, yeah. Japa. What is the, the moment that you can really stay in yourself the enough time to, to sustain this? It, it, no? All these other methods are never necessary. The, the, the one thing that is necessary is to attend to I. When we are unwilling to attend to I, these other methods can help to purify our mind, to bring us to the point where we're willing to accept that attending to I is the only way. Yeah. So uh, the other parts are appropriate if we are not convinced and we're not attracted to this path of self-investigation. So they have their place, but none of them can be a substitute for self-investigation. They are all, they're all tributaries. The main river, the, the river that will reach the ocean is only self-investigation. These other paths are like tributaries that flow into this path. And you are really convinced because your desire, does, your motivation to go inside is uh, unquestionable, no? Absolutely. Well, yes. No. Even if, I, uh, for most of us, our motivation to go inside is still very weak. But so long as we, 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 we want to try, so long as we're willing to try, that is sufficient. That shows our mind has been... No, I say, I, I don't say in this sense, no, in the yes. sense that uh, to let go, no, all the, the others, uh, 
techniques, no? Yes. The mantra japa, yeah. no? Yeah. Uh, real uh, is because you are absolutely motivation for only. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So what was we begin? When we begin to be attracted to this path of self investigation, that is the point at which all the other paths become redundant. Yeah. 